And good evening. Welcome to the UD Football Show here on this Tuesday night. The last game of the season coming up for the Spartans. Uh, they'll be heading to Storm Lake to take on the Buena Vista Beavers, and we'll be talking about that ball game here. And we're going to talk about the win over the Lawrence College Dewhawks. The key stays on the UD campus with a resounding 56 to nothing win. And the uh, Spartans send their seniors out with a great victory on senior day at uh, Chalmers Field. So we'll be talking with Coach Zwiefel about uh, that win, a great defensive performance that really highlighted that uh, victory, but the offense uh, had its way as well with the, uh, the Dewhawks and got that 56 to nothing win. So now they move on and they play a hot team in the Buena Vista, and we'll get into all of that here on this uh, Tuesday night. It is a noon kickoff once again this Saturday, so just a reminder that uh, we'll be on the air at 11.40 on 101.1 The River, or if you want to tune into the streaming on uh, dbq.edu. We also have the streaming on our website, 1011theriver.com. So we'll get into the UD Football Show with head coach Stan Zwiefel. He's here. We'll talk football when we return on 101.1 The River. And good evening on this Tuesday night. So we're back at uh, Chalmers Field, the site of our UD football show with head coach Stan Zwiefel. We bring in Coach Zwiefel. Uh, coach, thanks for coming up tonight. Tim, good to see you. It's a little bit chilly out there today, but good to see you. Yeah, there's uh, certainly a nip in the air, yes. and uh, it's November football, though. I it guess is. you can anticipate you're going to have any type of football weather this time of year. and. Uh, you had a little bit of a nip in the air on uh, Saturday, too. Windy conditions yes. once again here at uh, Chalmers Field. And uh, you blew away the Loris Dewhawks by the score of 56 to nothing with that win. So a very resounding victory for your team. Yeah, we started out uh, very well on both sides of the ball. Our first drive, uh, they took the opening possession. We three and out, and then we went down and scored immediately. And then they st we stopped on a three and out, and they were going to do some kind of... Uh, different punt formation to try to get us male aligned and they got a little bit confused on it snapped the ball over the punter's head we got the ball and I think we scored right directly maybe two plays or one play after that turnover up 14 nothing and then pretty much really uh, dictated the tempo and just really uh, dictated uh, the game uh, the rest of the way it really wasn't ever in danger and uh, uh, I played I think we played a little over 80 kids in that day played all four quarterbacks all four senior quarterbacks that was all really good all of them got to throw passes and put them in early in the second quarter for uh, a number of both Zach and Matt got in, in the second quarter so felt really good about the number of players we got to play and just about how we performed your defense uh, played wonderful you you said uh, you thought they'd play angry and it seems yeah. like they did play with a chip on their shoulder allowing just 103 yards of offense for Loris and didn't allow Loris to cross your 40-yard line. That's a yeah. pretty unbelievable In stat. this day and age of offensive football, any time you get a shutout is, I think, very remarkable. And then I think any time you can hold an offense to dang near close to 100 yards. I did tell you Saturday, uh, the day before, say I thought we would play angry just because of what happened at Simpson. But Loris really gave us a boost uh, I, as we entered the field. A number of our players entered the field that was uh, – some comments made from the Loris football players to our seniors or our players that enter the field. Oh my gosh, I was uh, really surprised and it really was a great motivation for a couple of our players. I don't know if you need that kind of motivation, but it really got us fired up and it really got me fired up. And uh, we talked about it in the locker room prior to going out about, uh, you know, defending our home turf and having some class and, and, uh, uh, it, it really got our dander up, Tim. That's the best way for me to say it. I'm surely not being derogatory to anybody or anything. I'm just saying, my gosh, that was very classless, and we responded in a very angry fashion. Well, you certainly did. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the numbers speak for themselves. 103 yards total offense, minus 11 yards yeah. rushing, and that's, that's uh, that was, I guess, Loris's best hope uh, was yeah. to get some kind of ground game against And they do you. have a nice running back, as we've talked about before. The carrier kid from Schalzburg is a quality running back, but – we dominated them from our front four, dominated their offensive line. And then, of course, we had some blitz games and things, and we just they just never really had much of an opportunity. A great day offensively once again. Uh, Tyler Rutenbeck, uh, he has certainly been able to find that end zone this year, hasn't he? Five touchdown catches. That's a new school record. Yep. And uh, he's number one in the nation in uh, receiving touchdowns, 19, and uh, number one in yards receiving in the nation, 1,179. And uh, just another great day for him. really was. And it's really interesting. We've talked about this a number of times. He's had 19 touchdowns. We were able to throw the ball deep to him in almost every game with the exception of one, and that was Warburg. 
And uh, as we told you, we thought Warbrick had some very good defense second, but he's had an outstanding year and able to maintain that, I think is a really mark of uh, excellence because, you know, one anybody can have a good game occasionally. You know, we've been blessed here, Tim, to have as good a receivers as there is in the country. You're going to be talking to one here in a couple minutes, our All-American tight end, Miles Hookstead. We've had All-Americans at the wide receiver spot. We've led the conference in passing uh, three out of our four years that we're here. We're leading it right now in the year we didn't uh, lead the conference pass. We lost by .2 yards per game. So we've been darn effective in throwing the ball. And this receiving core that we have have really developed over the course of the season. And Tyler's kind of been a... The, the main cog of our receiving core, but you can look at Chris Bagley has a number of touchdowns. Sean Anderson, a, a three to four year starter for us. So the receivers have really developed. And I was really pleased with our tight end play on Saturday. Lee Jones, who uh, has taken over for Tyler Dobratz when Tyler got hurt with his ankle in the Stevens Point game, had a very productive game. And we have all those people coming back now. I mean, this is, it's really exciting for us in that part. Going to have to replace our quarterback. We have four quarterbacks. I, I'd like to... We, I've been asked this question by a number of my close coaching friends. Z, when have you ever had four senior quarterbacks on your team? <laughs> my answer is pretty clear, never. <laughs> and, you know, you have four seniors who have stuck it out and played uh, two of them transfers uh, and two of them four-year guys. It's just unbelievable when you think about it. So uh, that's going to be a, a major recruiting part for us. But, again, as I said, uh, our team, I think, is very, very good. You know, we've lost uh, Simpson 50-46, to 46, and we lost to Warburg in the last 30 seconds of the game. We really wish we'd get those options to play it again, but we're not going to. But uh, uh, talking back on Saturday's game, I don't know if there could have been a better day for our seniors. And, boy, was that emotional, Tim, for all of us. You know, you never think about, you know, most co uh, uh, the coaches and players would say, boy, I am a critical guy. I am after those guys from the minute they get on the practice field to the time they get off. And I don't get a chance to show the appreciation as much as I can, but hugging their parents and hugging those players, that's always an emotional time for me because I'd like to think that when they got here, we've made them a little bit better person, number one. Uh, get, got them the chance to think about how hard work will pay off for you in the end, whether it's playing time or whatever that is, but Hopefully they learn some things then more than just football. And when you give a guy that's been with you for four years, and I'll tell you, one of the things about football that I loved him more than anything else is you have to work your butt off for 10 contests. Basketball, you get to play 40. Baseball, I don't know how many of those guys play a lot. But in our sport, you get one game a week, and that's all you get. And then you got 10 months to work for those ne <laughs> next 10 opportunities. And I'll tell you, I, I think it is about as – accurate about what you got to do in life is anything that you do the daily preparation and grind to be good and if you want to be great oh my gosh I think that's difficult so when we talk to our kids you know when they're leaving you after that time that's really a that's really an emotional time and then the parents have really entrusted you to take care of their son and I understand that I had a couple daughters and sons that went off to college when I wasn't their coach at that time and boy that's a big leap of faith giving somebody to take care of your child so all those things are really emotional like and I thought that all played off was a wonderful celebration before the game our seniors and uh, we had it was just it was a good day yeah 17 seniors uh, played their final game at uh, Chalmers Field it was uh, as you say uh, coach a wonderful day uh, back to on the field. You mentioned the tight ends. Uh, yeah. Was that a plan to get the tight ends a little bit more involved? On you know, Saturday? it has been, and it really, we've really been, we probably use more two tight end offense than anybody within the league, with the exception of BV, which we'll talk about, because they are really, a, their best players, I think, are their two tight ends. And they're very close to us in, in personality about what they're doing with their tight ends and wide receivers. But yeah, we've been trying more and more to get our, we call that our ace personnel. And those are two really good players. But not only are they big kids, Lee 6'3", 240, and Tyler's about 6'4 half, about 230. Both of them are excellent receivers. They can get you downfield and they can do some things. And we always talk about it's very hard on defense to defend uh, uh, what we call a nub. And we do that with two tight ends grouped together, which we call a wing set. And that really creates some very difficult alignment problems for the secondary. So we've been doing that you know, here for about two years. And, you know, when we had Miles last year, we had really three quality tight ends. Now these two other guys have developed and been developing. So, yeah, that's a really good set for us. You were 6-6 six of six in your red zone opportunities, yeah. and I looked at the national stats. Yes. Uh, you're 10th in the country in yeah. red zone offense. Um, pretty good. 
Yeah, we'd like to be number one on that particular stat, Tim, but we've gone back over the last five years that we've been here. We've been number one in the conference every year except once in red zone. And this is really the first year that will be really interesting. It will come down the last game. We've led the conference every year that I've been here in first downs. We're uh, .5 behind Simpson right now. So it'll be interesting to see what Simpson does in their game and what we do. But we pride ourselves in offensively and moving the sticks. And then we really want to be tough as heck when we get inside the 25, being able to score touchdowns more than field goals. And we've attempted nine field goals this year and made six of them. So three of those misses are from the field goal part of it. But also, we just really work very, very hard at trying to be able to score the ball because those opportunities come back to haunt you if you don't. And I, I guess I can tell you this, Tim, Wartburg is where we had three of the other misses in that game. That's one of the reasons I think we lost that game. You know, over on the defensive side of the ball, I was going to point this out earlier, but uh, one of the guys that seemed to play really angry and yeah. seems like he yeah. plays well when he's angry yes. was safety Darren Miles. Yes. He came out and sort of set the tone, it seemed like, for that uh, defensive performance, had a great pick, and Boy, he uh, got tired watching him try to get to the end zone there. Yeah, he almost well, made that, it. On that interception return. I'll tell you what was said to Darren as he entered the field on Saturday. One of their players said, you aren't so big, and said it in a little bit different terms than I'm saying it. And, oh, my gosh, did that get a, an instant response from Darren. I said, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for saying that because he did play angry. But I'll tell you what he did. They targeted him a couple times, and very few teams in our league have thrown the ball in his direction. He got an interception. He was the second leading tackler on our team. He had a number of tackles, but he really played probably his best game, I thought, for us on Saturday. At least that stuck out the most and actively involved with the ball. We also put him back to return kicks, unfortunately, or fortunately, they never kicked off but once because they couldn't get the ball in the end zone. So we wanted to really give him a chance to have that, and he'll be back returning kicks for us against PV on Saturday. Well, it was a great win, uh, 56 to nothing over Loris College, and the key stays uh, in your office there, and uh, it's, yeah. you've gotten pretty it's used nice. to that I there. go by it every day, and I do have a nice, fond feeling for it because, you know, our first two years here, we didn't have the key, and I was reminded of that many, many times, and we've won it three years in a row now, and, Tim, I don't know if those three games in the last three years have ever been close, 56 nothing, 45 nothing, and... 41, 13, or 16. So, I mean, we've had our way with them. Uh, we're getting to be a better football team. We're going to prove it, and, and we hope that we can keep the key for a long extended period of time. That's great. We've had uh, nearly 2,000 folks in the stands here at uh, Chalmers yes. Field and, uh, of course, benefiting uh, Maria House Teresa's shelter. So that was uh, uh, a great positive thing that came out of that day as well. We'll come back on the UD Football Show with head coach Stan Zweifel. We're going to talk about the final game of the regular season for the Spartans. They're going to hit the road and go to northwest Iowa for the last football game of this season as they'll take on Buena Vista. We'll come back and visit about that with Coach Zweifel when we return here on 101.1 The River. This is the UD Football Show on this Tuesday night. We're with head coach Stan Zweifel, Miles Hookstead, who was a great tight end in his uh, UD career. He is now blowing a whistle. He's a coach this year with the Spartans. He's going to uh, join us here in just a little bit here on our uh, football show. But first, uh, we're going to set up the matchup this Saturday, a noon kickoff in Storm Lake as the Spartans visit the Buena Vista Beavers. And we'll be on the air at 1140 with our pregame show. And uh, Coach uh, Buena Vista, boy, they're coming off a huge victory, uh, winning over Simpson College, a final play at Simpson. And I think I read it was like the first time they'd beaten Simpson at Simpson since 1987. I think that's right. 34-32, uh, to 32, and uh, they won three in a row. So this is, uh, this is a team that's playing very well they're at the end of the season. Well, very well, Tim. And, and we had mentioned before we got in there, they played the toughest schedule in the conference there, the 14th strongest schedule in the country. We're the 15th. So... And they have just gotten hot, and they did that last year too, Tim. If you recall, before we played them, I think they had won three or maybe even four before they had played us. And they beat Simpson this year, last Saturday, on no clock, no time left on the clock, a quarterback scramble into the end zone. They led the entire game, and Simpson went ahead late with about 31 seconds left. They went down and put it in the end zone the last 30 seconds. Brown scrambled in for a touchdown with no time left on the clock. It was an exciting game to watch. Even when I watched the tape, I'd already seen it. I'm like, wow, this is exciting. And they are very, very excited about trying to be 4-3. and three. And That's a big uh, deal, I think, for BV because they've struggled over the years that I've been in the league trying to get themselves up to 500. And Jay Anderson's done a great job out there. He's 
played as a competitive schedule, as we mentioned earlier, that you possibly can play. Their quarterback has made some plays this year. They've got a wonderful, wonderful tight end. Oh, my God, he's huge. I don't know. They list him at 6'5", 250. I don't know how big he is. He's dang big. And that'll be a matchup problem for us, so we'll see how we can do with that. But as we talked earlier, Tim, they're one of the teams, I think, that are really trying to use some double tight end sets and try to base up your front and try to get some matchups. And they're both their wide receivers have played really, really well this year, too. So they'll present some problems in that part for us. Uh, our defense will have to play an outstanding game to, to hold them down a little bit. And they've done a really good job. Uh, I think uh, defensively, now we, we think we have uh, some good matchups like we do, Tim, every week in the secondary. We think our wide receivers match up against all the secondaries. And so we think we're going to have a chance. And we, we, we th it's going to be a good game. Uh, it's going to be a competitive game. I don't think it's going to be a game like we had last Saturday with such a lopsided score. But it'll be a very physical game. And they'll try to come out and do some things against us. You mentioned uh, their defense. I was looking at their uh, mm -hmm too deep and it looks like they have a lot of uh, players back from last year they a lot do. of a good secondary and uh, they do so that'll be a, a good challenge for your team yeah we've just have been very fortunate to have great games in my career out there it's uh, we were talking about this before we got in there we've had some wonderful big games throwing I think Wyatt two years ago threw for seven touchdowns out there we just had some really nice yeah. big games and you know last year that if game that game went down to overtime and we just were able to eke that thing out so i'm sure they think boy that's about time they beat us and uh, I'm excited about that part. I mean, I'm excited about going out and play BB because if we win the game we're 5 and 2 in conference and uh, so that's not where i wanted to be tim but 5 and 2 is still a, a very very good conference record and we still are a young football team in many many ways tim so this will be a nice building block for us and I talk about all the time, you know, that last game leaves a taste in your mouth till the next season starts. I wish it would be a very good taste in our mouth. I was looking back at last year's game, and oh, my goodness, that was a uh, <laughs> wild one. Last year, your team winning in overtime, having to come from uh, behind. I think you're 11 points, down, points last, down. Yeah, and, last uh, six minutes, yes. Yeah, so it was uh, certainly and you know, a thriller. Was, we looked at that, we've looked at that tape, you know, a number of times, and I've looked at the stats. And we had 445 yards. They had 270. If you remember, That's we right. went on a fourth and one and a quarterback sneak, and it popped out. Wyas is in between his legs, and they picked it up and went for a 60-yard yep. touchdown. What? How does that happen? <laughs> and we also missed a couple scoring opportunities. So we thought we played better than the score indicated, but we were able to claw our way back in that fourth quarter. And then, of course, last year was the big win, Tim, if you remember, uh, going up. Bit, both teams that were going against went had a very difficult time scoring. Offensively, um, talk about what they're going to try to do to you. Yeah. They're... Uh, uh, moved the ball pretty easily yeah. against Simpson last week. They did. You know what they've done is, and of course, uh, we talk about this, uh, Simpson is, the we think, the worst defense in the conference, and that's not I'm just saying they are. Statistically, they're the worst defense in the conference. But we talk about they're going to get the ball to the tight end, and very few teams try to get the ball to the tight end. Going to work the inside the hash marks with the tight end. They've got a really nice speed receiver that you got to respect, so he's got a deep threat. On the other side, they've got a nice physical receiver. He's a a bigger kid, he's very physical. I don't know if he's got great speed, but he'll catch the ball and he'll make you miss. So they got some weapons they spread you out. And then when they spread you out, they got the Barrett kid at quarterback, or excuse me, at tailback, they give him the ball. And then the quarterback's been able to make some plays. You know, he's throwing completions under 50%. But he's made big plays at big times, and sometimes that can overcome the lack of, a, of accuracy that he has. But they'll do some things. But the great news about this, our, off, our defense sees that every day out of us. They're very, very much a blueprint like we are and what they're trying to do with their tight ends, and I say multiple tight ends, and what they're trying to do in their throw game. So that's a really good crossover. Now, conversely, it's a good crossover for their defense too because they see the same thing in practice. But I really think that it'll come down to, again, like most games do, this who makes the most plays. And then, of course, I think the one area that I was disappointed in last Saturday, Tim, was our kickoff. I mean, our kickoff, oh, my gosh, it was – we kicked the ball to bounce three times and gave those guys, that was most of their yards in the game was the result of us kicking the ball out of bounds. So we got to get that cleaned up, and we think we will, and we think we have our kicker who normally kicks was hurt on Saturday, hurt in, in pregame warm-up. So hopefully that won't happen on this Saturday. You mentioned something to me before we went on the air here that there's uh, another carrot out there. If you come away with a win yeah. uh, in this game, and then I believe it was uh, Central uh, Cole, wins. If we on, went on Saturday, Cole. the last three years in the conference, we've been, we'll be, have been 16 and 6. 
That's a 700 winning percentage, and that would put us tied for uh, with every all the other teams of having the best record in the conference in the last three years. Now, you know, Tim, how adamant I've been about since I've got here to be able to play with the big three, Cole, Central, and Wartburg. We've said this before. We were 2-1 and one against Coe the last three years, 2-1 and one against Central the last three years. The guy that's kind of <gasps> taken the breath away from me has been Wartburg. So <laughs> now if we can win this game, we'd be 16-6, and six, which would be an outstanding record for us and put us in this situation where we think we're getting more and more competitive that we can play for conference championships every year. Well, I was assured that uh, we're going to have a very nice yeah. day, 50 degrees, no wind off of Storm Lake. Well, I think there might be some wind, but it's going to be warm. <laughs> That's my prediction. Every time I've been to Buena Vista, <laughs> I've needed two or three pair of insulated socks up there in the booth. And when we were talking about this, your win in 2009, I guess I remember that as a different day. I thought it was a little yeah, colder that day. you said it was day. cold. I thought it was beautiful. You had a Gatorade bath yeah. that day, and I felt so... It was a beautiful I thought, day. I didn't know of course, if you'd survive. Of course, any time you win, it doesn't matter. It's a beautiful day any time you win that. That's for sure. Oh, no doubt about that. Um, before we let you go, um, final thoughts on being a Vista as you get yeah. ready for the final game of the, of the season. You know, it's the one trip that's a long trip for our players, and it's a kind of a fun trip. We uh, go out there and stay at a, a very beautiful hotel and have kind of a uh, good bonding thing for our team. And, of course, you know, the last game of the season is, is – I, I told our guys, and I, I truly mean this, Tim, I can remember every play from my last college game. It's the one that I think – I don't I, – you know – I don't care if the scores, but how you play, oh, my gosh, that is so relevant about how you think about your last time you get a chance to play football. And I encouraged and urged our players to understand that's for the seniors, but it's also the last time those guys get to play till next September. Now, when you think about that, oh, my gosh, you don't go play pickup football games like you do basketball. This is, a, this is the last football game they're going to play for nine months. So we'd sure like to go out there and give it our best effort. Before we turn you loose, uh, Miles Hookstead, uh, tied in from last year. He joined your coaching staff this year. He, he must really be a glutton for punishment. Yeah, he know. must be working with me. But <laughs> I tell you what, I knew Miles since he was about, I think, probably third grade. Now, he'll tell you some stories. Not many of them are true. But I did go out and coach Miles a little bit when he's a little baseball player. And Miles would say, oh, my, that guy's awful mean. And I'm not sure that's true. But, uh, yeah, Miles has been kind of a member of our family for a long time. Played basketball with Michael and Mark. Growing up in Whitewater was an outstanding athlete in Whitewater High School, and it was my best recruit. He was one of our top recruits we've got here, and he's been a basketball, football player for us. But what's better about Miles? And he's a fantastic player, fantastic player. Uh, he's a great person and a great student. He's got tremendous work ethic, and he's just a good guy. He's just a good person. I was very excited and lucky to get him to join our staff. And he's coaching the O-line, which I think has been a real wonderful experience for him. Boy, it's hard work coaching the O-line, but... Hope to have that he'll be an outstanding football coach in the future. All right. We'll look forward to bringing Miles over here. Coach, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, we'll see you uh, with that beautiful, beautiful day forecast. Beautiful day, 50 degrees. Storm Lake. I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> thanks All for joining right, us, Tim, Coach. We'll see you. Thank All you. All right. See you. Thank ya. you. That's head coach Stan Zuifel joining us here on the UD Football Show. We'll come back and we'll talk with the offensive line coach, Miles Hookstead, when we come back here on the UD Football Show with Stan Zuifel on 101.1 The River. This is the UD Football Show. Stan Zweifel uh, with us on a Tuesday night. Uh, coach has departed, and we brought in uh, a first-year head coach, Miles Hookstead. Uh, played tight end for four years uh, for the Spartans. Played basketball here at the University of Dubuque as well. Starter uh, most of his career. And uh, thanks for coming on the program, Miles. All right, thanks for having me. Well, it's uh, certainly uh, been a different thing for you this year, uh, being on the coaching sidelines instead of having the pads on, what's that been like for you this year? It's been it's been different, that's for sure. But uh, I'm really enjoying it. You know, it's a little bit different having to get the insight of uh, what goes on in the staff meetings, kind of all that stuff. And uh, it's been a great adjustment. You know, I'm enjoying it, and I look forward to many years to come, hopefully. I know your dad was uh, a football coach, and uh, was he your coach in high school? Or? Uh, he actually was not. He actually coached at a high school. I played against, I played against him for four years. Uh, it was kind of always <laughs> nice to play against him. Uh, had a good rivalry going with my dad, but uh, he's always been my personal coach and a great guy to learn from. And, uh, you know, he was always there for me growing up, and uh, he always taught me the – you know, always pay close attention to detail, and Coach Z complain here for him as well. Same thing. Is that what got you interested in coaches, just kind of in the blood? or? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I knew I wanted to stay with athletics somehow, and uh, 
uh, athletic training really wasn't my thing. Didn't really get into that kind of stuff. And sports management was kind of something I enjoyed as well. And uh, as soon as I got into, uh, you know, playing for Coach Z and I played for Coach uh, Sieverding as well, just two great coaches to play for and Coach Bierman and all the other coaches, a uh, new coach and something I wanted to do. Well, on the offensive line, uh, that's uh, where your assignment has been this year. And, you know, talk about that offensive line, uh, how they've come along. Uh, you had some veterans uh, that came along. That made your job a little bit easier and uh, had them as teammates. So uh, that must have been an uh, interesting experience to translate that from from the <laughs> player side to the coaching side. Absolutely. You know, playing uh, with Austin Hatzinger and Stefanowski, all those guys, uh, it was a little bit different going to now telling those guys what to do and but uh, they've adjusted well, and they've done a great job. Uh, both those seniors have done a great job leading the younger guys, and the whole offense line in general has played great. Uh, obviously, would like to improve in everything. I don't feel they've played the best that they have played that they can play. I believe that going out to BV will be one final chance this year to play their best game. And you know, playing for uh, Coach Mick all the time, he always said, you know, be patient with them, be patient, don't try to overdo it, be patient, let it come to them, kind of like I let the game come to me as well. And I, you know, that's kind of the way I've done, gone into coaching, and I believe it's paying off. Mm -hmm. What areas of improvement have you really seen them make uh, as they progress through the season under your watch? Uh, just getting more competitive as we get going, uh, finishing blocks, uh, identifying the fronts, uh, picking up blitzers, stuff like that, you know, beginning of the year and kind of going into the offseason, the big thing was picking up blitzes and uh, giving our quarterback time to throw the ball. Uh, with Brian, you know, he's a good quarterback, and if we give him the time to throw to Tyler Rooten back in our tight ends, you know, we'd be very successful. So that was the big thing, and I believe that we're getting better at that, and we can only improve, though. As you've looked at uh, the offense as a whole, uh how have you felt about their play through the year? I know they've uh, made a lot of improvement uh, in areas and you know, some tough losses this year. Oh, absolutely. Getting beat by Warbrig and Simpson kind of close down to the end. But, uh, you know, we've had opportunities to put more points on the board and we've failed to do that. But for the most part, I believe that we're explosive offenses we've been in the past. You know, we've had great wide receivers through here like Michael and Demarcus, uh, Wyatt at quarterback, Justin Spalding at running back. All those kind of guys had a good offense line and we're explosive and you know, we believe that you can look at the stats in the nation as well as the Iowa Conference, and we're about as explosive as you can get, and we just keep on improving on that. You know, Coach Sweefel, you're in here when he made his comment about uh, when you were a senior, um, when he was a senior, he remembers his last football game, and you want to play well. Did you talk about that with the seniors before their final game here at all? A knowing little, what it's like? A little bit. Uh, I always, you know, tell before we do every drive, I always tell the wide, uh, excuse me, the offensive line to. You know, play hard and, you know, get that first first down and then we get going. You know, we get rolling. You get that first one, then you get the second one, third one. That's what gets you into the end zone. And, uh, you know, going into that whole week, it was defend Chalmers. You know, this is our home field. We don't let anyone come in here and push us around. Uh, we inflict pain on them and, you know, keep on playing hard through that final whistle. And, you know, you play hard. Uh, whatever the scoreboard shows, you know, you left it all on the field. Mm -hmm. uh, during the season and in the off season, Coach Sweep will going to have you involved in the recruiting process, trying to get some new young men in here? Yep, absolutely. Uh, I'll be recruiting the state of Wisconsin, so it would be nice to go back home a little bit and recruit my, where I played football in the area and uh, also get to some new high schools. I'm excited to get over the Milwaukee area, get up into Madison and even kind of over in this area as well and uh, see the young talent. I've gone out to football games just about every Friday night. And I uh, saw a lot of young talent, and um, I actually have my dad back in uh, Whitewater also, you know, telling me kids that are coming through there as well and uh, in the area. And he's out there along with my brother. They go to high school games just about every Friday night trying to give me, uh, you know, tips on, you know, who's playing well and kind of stuff like that. They look at stats, newspaper, all that kind of stuff to help me out a little bit. Well, talent-rich areas, and uh, <laughs> so you'll be helping to mine those for Coach Zweifel. And uh I want to thank you for coming on the program here tonight. Uh, Miles, uh, great to see you around the campus, and uh, good luck to the Spartans on Saturday. All right, thank you very much, and look forward to seeing you out there. All right, that's Miles Hookstead, uh, assistant coach on the uh, UD football staff this season. We're going to come back with some final thoughts on our UD football show with Stan Zwift. We'll come back after that, after this, on 101.1 The River. And that's going to do it for our UD football show with Stan Zweef. We'll have one more program. We'll be here next Tuesday night with the final show as we'll uh, reflect on the season and hopefully a Spartan victory to end the season with uh, over at Buena Vista uh, University. You can hear the game here on 101.1 The River this Saturday with 1140, our pregame show, and 12 noon with the kickoff as the Spartans try to finish with their sixth win of the season and uh, be a winning team for the uh, 2013 football campaign. So thanks for tuning in on this Tuesday night. 
Hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday evening. I'm Tim Larry on 101.1 The River.